All right, now we're looking at part two of health, healthcare, and disability. And for part two, it's a briefer one. We're going to look at predominantly the social development and health. So a global, more global perspective on um, health in particular. And we're going to look at approaches to healthcare. We're going to look at the health, sort of healthcare system that are, uh, in Canada. Uh, we have a rather unique perspective on it in Canada, but it doesn't generally um, move out across the world at all. So we're going to see what, you know, um, what that looks like, what are the conditions of it, what are the parameters of it, and then we're going to look at healthcare issues in the future and what might be some of the effect that we'll see about some health issues and disability in the future. What might be some of the prospects? So you might be considering in this particular chapter would be, you know, what is the state of healthcare system in Canada today? Um, when it began, I think it was in 1957, I think, the idea was initiated. It'll be in your slides or in your video. And it has changed over time. So what is the state of Canadian healthcare system today and how might it be improved? Uh, there are certainly um, people who are not being as a as affected by the changes and there's others who are dramatically affected by the changes in our health healthcare system and so there have been pushes towards trying to make changes that would include more people rather than exclude and stop the process of creating a two-tiered system those that have access to the quality and those that have access but to less quality all right so let's get a start on part two uh, don't forget next week uh, is reading week so you get to get caught up in some things um, also um, what else was there there wasn't anything else all right let's carry on and let's have a good day and enjoy your reading week and hope you all get caught up and we'll see you back in week eight bye now let's look at social development and health and the more global perspective when we look at the difference between developing nations and developed nations, we see these differences. Um, mostly due to in the developed nations, we have good nutrition, good medication, we have more equality, and um, all of this helps towards having a better social development and health. Whereas in developing nations, we'll find some differences that we might see as being fairly traditional differences, if you will. One of the things that came through in the first part and is repeated here where we see this over countries, health and wealth are connected. You have, you have money, you have a country of money, you're going to have access to better resources and therefore better health. And sort of look at the differences here. We're just seeing um, essentially health countries. Now if you look at the graph that was that made available for you uh, for your assignment, you'll see those differences that basically health and wealth are correlated. This is a reminder that one of the po on the on the positive side, infant mortality rates have decreased from 1990 to the year 2000 across the board. We've seen this in developed countries certainly, but in more developing countries, we see immunization, oral um, rehydration therapy for diarrhea, and iodized salt to save as many as five million children. Um, age expectancy rates have risen. So what's important, and this is a reminder, this is uh, from a slide that's in uh, week seven, looking at life expectancy to help you understand how that's determined. Um, when we talk about an increase as as many as five million children surviving, one of the questions that Hans Rosling had sort of inquired then and sort of did a video on, and I would encourage you to find that and view it as well, is what if we have more children you know, staying healthy, does that not increase the population and put the population of the world at risk? And he did a great video on that to sort of show how the data does not support that. So one of the things that's hugely different across the world is the access, and it's a huge difference, access to clean water. Clean water makes a huge difference on so many different levels for so many different people around the world. We need to protect our clean water better than we often do in this world today. So when we think in terms of our health care in Canada, uh, from 1995, um, these events have occurred. Budget cuts to health care, reduced medical student enrollment, reduced nursing student enrollment with layoffs. The opinion polls 
in Canada that many Can Canadians believe that their health care has been jeopardized. You can find this in figure 11.2 on page 275 of your textbook. Now, universal health care is one of which all citizens receive medical services paid for through tax revenue. Now, this emerged uh, from Premier uh, Tommy Douglas from Saskatchewan in 1947 to cover health hospital co uh, costs. That's uh, Tommy Douglas there. In 1962, the program was extended to cover physician costs, not just hospital costs. And by 1972, both programs were extended to all of Canada. Universal health care elements that provide um, that, that provinces must meet. And these are those five conditions right here. Universality, comprehensiveness, accessibility, portability, and public administration. And so it's important uh, in, in, in our health care in Canada as of 1972, this is something that all provinces were to adhere to. Well, there's a problem with the universal health care. There's been drastic cuts that have undermined the system. Overutilization of the system, much waste, uh, the, the duplication of services across the provinces and across, Can across Canada has had a huge impact on uh, uh, costs of health care. Long waiting lists. Some are advocating for private health care uh, that would result in a more of a two-tier system. And a two-tier system really just means that having um, the rich be able to afford one quality of care and the poor being able to afford another. The United States, for example, the only other, the only industrialized ca uh, country which does not have a health care system that provides universal coverage for all of its citizens. And if you've been watching and listening to the U.S. Um, election and with Trump's um, presidency, you've noticed that uh, this is a big issue in the United States around the reversing of Obamacare or the Affordable uh, Care uh, Act. And in fact, in the United States, 60% of the population doesn't know that those are the two of the same thing. The Affordable uh, Care Act and the Obamacare are two of, are exactly the same thing. They are the same thing. And so their coverage is about to take a big, um, huge um, dive. Most citizens in the United States have to pay for private coverage. About 15% of the population has no coverage whatsoever. Canadians are healthy, healthier than Americans and have better access to health care system. So we should do what we can to, re to preserve what we've got as well as we can. If we look at the different approaches to health care, there's three of them that are referenced in your textbook, and I'm going to give you a quick overview on each one. You can find more information in your textbook, please. One is the medical model of illness, and there's some assumptions about illness. One, that the um, deviation is from, from the normal, it's specific and universal, there's biological causes, there's an analogy to a broken machine, if you're ill, there's something wrong with your parts, <laughs> and defined and treated through science. And this is the medical model. It looks at illness. It doesn't look at health. And that's an important distinction. If we go to this, uh, a second, which is more the technology in medicine and what it has done, we can alter our bodies for cosmetic or aesthetic, aesthetic purposes. Uh, alter our nose. We can um, do you know, so much cosmetic work, uh, reducing fat, increasing fat, reducing breast size, uh, increasing breast size. We can do so many things cosmetically. It begins to put into question who are we and what makes us who we are. The creation of cyborgs, um, part human, part machine. They started the thinking back when pacemakers, and, and um, these are pieces that are put into our body to help our heart keep pace. Or the artificial hearts, the Jarvik. This is the first um, um, artificial heart that replaced our own personal heart with a machine. Um, there's certainly other examples. The essence of life in the brain is the brain. Um, technology has been able to look at the brain and see the brain in action and looking at maybe the sense of self is in the brain. And so it's brought into question um, whether the brain is the only important part of where the soul and soul self is. There's an example of a Russian doctor who has got an individual who has agreed to have a head transplant. Where does technology stop? 
and where do we stop the use of technology? The external womb, conception and gestation outside the womb. Um, uh, I'm trying to think of her name. Uh, Oh, I've lost it, but there was a young lady who was the first test tube baby um, in England. I believe it was in 1982, I think. Uh, she has two children of her own, but she was born outside the womb, if you will. She was conceived outside the room, womb. And all sorts of examples of new reproductive and genetic technologies um, that impact the way that we view health and view one another and our abilities to take advantage of technologies for medicine. And then lastly, we can touch base and look at the alternative approach. And this is where we're starting to move in Canada a bit, is looking at some alternative means by which to uh, reach out and help citizens, promote more preventative medicine, uh, responsibilities to individuals and families, more community-based care, holistic, examples of using other professionals, um, social factors influencing. Uh, so in healthcare in Canada, we're seeing a variety of ways in which we could start to explore how we can improve the overall benefit of what the healthcare system in Canada can do. Now lastly, but not leastly, we'll look at the future. Continued improvement, uh, movement, sorry, to prevention and community care. We're going to see more and more of that happen. Um, as the population ages, there will be greater demand on the system, and we're seeing that beginning already. Need of the government to support move to community-based care, yet uh, with burdens on caregivers by doing so. There's great pressure for privatizing the system and a continued uh, presence of social factors causing illness. Uh, in the global perspective, we'll see renewed concerns for uh, sexually transmitted diseases and HIV and AIDS. Um, new concerns for SARS and mad cow disease and the growth of the avian influenza, an epidemic among domestic birds from Asia that may spread to humans. West Nile viruses. We'll see more issues regarding uh, viruses than we've seen in the past. Okay, on that happy note. Um, we're ending part two of health, health care, and disability. Bye now.